Hello! Welcome to the bat spinning class of the Knit Spin Farm Virtual Festival. I'm so glad that you're here. I am Joanna, also known as Joanna Spring on Ravelry and Knit Spin Farm on Instagram. I have been making and spinning bats for five or six years or seven or I don't know. I use a drum carter to make them and I've been selling them. I have a monthly bat club. And I wanted to show you how to spin a bat, how a couple of ways that you could spin a bat. And I wanted to talk about, oh, there's a bee on the camera. I wanted to talk about the different ways to spin bats, what bats are made of, what the yarn looks like when you spin them in different ways, and some of the finished objects that you could make with bats. These are questions I get. You ready? This is a bat. Are you done? <laughs> a bat can refer to a lot of different formats of something like this. When I, when I and that rooster talk about bats, I'm going to be talking about the kind that I make, which are composed of wool and silk only, except sometimes they're sparkle because sometimes you need sparkle. So I'm not gonna cover anything with sort of synthetic or plant-based fibers in them. I don't just don't have any experience with that, so I can't help. Um, but I'm also gonna talk about how I make a bat and how they might be a little unique from other bats. That's in the next section. But this here is one of my bats. Let's talk about the difference between top and roving and how that works out with bats. And we'll talk about the difference between worsted and woolen spinning. So you may hear all spinning fiber referred to as roving. It's not quite right. Roving generally refers to fiber that has been carded and is the individual five strands of wool are going in all different directions. This is a wee little bit of roving. Contrast to that is combed top, where the wool has gone through another step. You start with raw wool that you wash off a sheep, and then you have all these locks, and you have to open them up. When you comb, you open them up, and then you align them all in, a very, in the same direction. So I don't know if you can tell here, all of these individual strands of wool are going in this direction. This is combed top. Whereas on the roving, they're kind of, it's more like a web and they're going all over the place. I think one of the easiest ways to show you, because wool is not as easy to see, is to think about a box of matches. When you have all of your matches in a box like this, all they're all going the same direction. That's combed top. If I were to spill this on the ground, this is roving. The individual fibers are going in all different directions. Now, what does that mean? Who cares? What that means is, in top, when they're all lined up, there's not a lot of air in between them. They're all kind of smushed and smooth. In roving, there's a lot more space in between the individual matches. There's a lot more air um, that typically makes yarn spun from roving or woolen spun yarn. It typically makes it a bit warmer because you can trap air in all of those spaces and then you warm up the air with your body and it stays nice and warm. Woolen spun. Worsted spun. So when all of the wool fibers or match sticks are lined up, the yarn tends to be smoother, uh, more uniform. There's not a lot of air between it. And this feels dense. I know you can't feel it, but here's a representation. These are both three ounces, but this one feels woo, and this one feels oh. The woolen spun is more airy, not quite as strong. So we're gonna talk about the differences of the yarn, but hang on, because I'm gonna show you how you can spin 
approximate them with in the next section when we talk about actually spinning a bat. Now bats are typically more like roving because they're carded and you mix up shoo 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 the wool. So when you buy a bat, you probably could get, it's like, who knows what you're getting? Read the listing, dive deep, talk to the person who made it. Sometimes they might be very carded, um, especially if they're starting with raw wool. You have to send the wool through the drum carter a couple of times to get it opened up. And in the process of doing it, the fibers are just gonna end up like everywhere. My bats start with combed top. They go through the, the carter as combed top. It's basically blended top of a whole bunch of things all mixed together with fun add-ins. What add-ins? Well, let's go over there and talk about them. Let's talk about the things that we add into bats that give them funky fun, dramatic texture, a little sparkle, a little flair. How many pieces of flair would you like? One of my favorite things, these are all gonna be my favorite things. This is sari silk. Sari silk is waste from when sari fabric is woven on a loom. So you can see that ribbon here is like the end. And then this bit is the sari. And what I do when I put it in a bat is I cut off pieces and that's what goes in your bat. I try to keep the staple length of the sari to be about the same as the staple length of wool. So it should be pretty easy to draft. Here it is in a bat. It should draft well with the wool and not require you to think too hard about it. Just to be excited about sari silk. Sometimes I use sari silk when it is a completely different color from the bat. So this bat was brown and yellow and it has crazy pink and red sari silk in it. So it stands out. But I also like to put sari silk in that's approximately the same color as what's in the bat. And then it's just a little more subtle. It just adds a little like depth of color. You can see the orange wool has orange sari mixed in with it there. There's some pink in this pink section here. It just adds a saturated, bright fun. Do you hear my dog agreeing? Another type of silk waste that gets added into bats is silk noil. It's the little tiny bits that are left over uh, when silk cocoons are combed or silk is is combed out um and it's just little nubbly bits like naps uh tweed is often wool naps but this is silk naps kind of the same thing a little bit softer in the bat it looks like bumps in the bat so fun nice and bumpy you got to you got to be chill about it you got to if you're gonna spin a bat with, with noil in it, you gotta be like, I'm good. It's not gonna be a smooth yarn, it's gonna be funky fun yarn. Funky fun! Here's what it looks like in when knitted up. Here's some purple. Sometimes it's a little more dramatic than others. There's a little bit of yellow right here. It's just like kapow. Neppy funness. If you feel like you're gonna pick it out, don't, don't get it. Because it wants to be there. The final type of silk that I add is just swaths of um, combed silk sliver. It's sometimes called. This is gonna be the most dramatically different in drafting because the staple length of silk is like one million feet. And for wool, it's typically a few inches. So you're gonna have to draft the silk a little bit differently than you draft the wool. But I think it's super worth it. It's my favorite thing to put in bats. I have to resist because I know it's not everybody's thing, but I love it so much. It makes the bats look amazing, I think. 
you just get like long strips of shiny. I love it. My goodness, I would, all right, I would put all of these in every bat, but I try to be respectful that not everybody spins the way I do. Um, you can see it knit up here, especially in the pink. It might be a little hard, but it's just a long stretch of shiny. Oh, here's yellow up here. That's silk. Love it. It's not hard. You just gotta be, you gotta be zen. I think that's what zen looks like. I don't really know. The last add-in is the most controversial. Be prepared. It's sparkle. I use Angelina. I think Firestar is another type of sparkle. I don't have experience with that. That might be nylon. But Angelina is just like, I don't know, metal. I don't know what it is, that's ridiculous. I should look up what it is, I'm sorry. It's just sparkle. In general, I don't put a lot of sparkle in my bats. I try to tame it down. Just a little sparkle for some fun. You see a little sparkle right here? Oh, oh, sparkle. Oh, it's just, just a little, just a little. You can handle, just try it, just try it, just a little. Sparkle comes in many colors. Here's a little orange sparkle. Oh. And then in the finished object, for most of them when I'm gentle about it, it's, it's subtle. Just a little, just a little sparkle. Just when you're out on the town in your super fancy wool, in places where you're allowed to go out on the town, just, you know, when you're feeling a little fancy, there's just a little sparkle. Not a lot. It's not like great-grandmother costume jewelry sparkle. Demure sparkle. Sometimes, though, I feel like I need to put a lot of sparkle in a bat because the color is calling for it. And then it's a little less subtle. But I'll warn you, when I put a lot of sparkle in a bat so that it's maybe a little bit overwhelming, like, what is that? Whoa. I will write in the listing, lots of sparkle. But generally, but you, I mean, come on. Could you imagine this bat with less sparkle? It needs the sparkle. So th those are the things that are added to bats. This is my drum carter. It is an Ashford triple wide. And it's a drum carter. This is called a liquor in drum. I think that's hilarious. So to start making a bat, I start with combed top and I just pull it off into the smaller pieces so the drum carter can handle it. And then I feed them through. As you can see, the top is going this way. I just feed it onto the drum and the fibers all stay pretty much aligned. So I feed the wool on. Certain add-ins get put in layers so if I was going to put some sparkle or sari silk on, I would put the wool here, sprinkle on my sari silk, and then put a layer on top to make a sandwich and send that through. Other add-ons like silk noil get applied directly to the drum, like this. That's kind of hard to see. There you go. And then when it's done, you just pull it off. This is the format that you'll, if you buy a bat from me or a number of other sellers, this is how you're going to get it all coiled up. So the first step in spinning a bat is to unfurl it and lay it out. So unroll it. And then tease it apart. It should come apart pretty easily. And then unroll it this way as well. Now you can see that this is a big, glorious mat of wool and a little bit of dirt. You might notice, and we'll cover this a bit in the next section, that the wool is primarily oriented in one direction. When I spin a bat, I break it into strips and I want to 
find this grain that goes like this so that I can work with it. I don't, for example, want to go like this. It's actually kind of difficult to pull the bat apart in that way. But if I just start from working with the grain of the wool, it's very easy to pull off a strip. Can you even see? Just pull a strip right off. Now, usually before I start spinning a bat, I think about how I'm going to spin it. I'm gonna make this one a two ply. So the first thing I wanna do is divide it into two equal sections. You could get specific and try to weigh it and all stuff, but I just kind of work it together until I'm in the middle. Work my hands together until I'm in the middle, and then I pull it into two sections. This one will just wrap up and stick aside for now. That'll be our second bottle. Now we have the same thing, but half of it. I will pull this bit off. And now I'm going to work with this part of the bat when we spin it. This kind of looks like a typical braid of fiber that you might be used to. And you can just treat it as such. You can sort of see different layers of color as they go on the drum carter. Look at that layer. So let's spin it. So this is my e-spinner, Oscar. And you can see Bill talking about walking through how he made this in another video. But we're going to use him to spin bats in two different ways. The first way will be mostly worsted. Uh, as we talked about, the fibers in this bat stay mostly aligned, and this is like the matchsticks, still in the box, all lined up. So to do that, I just take the strip that I've pulled off the bat and spin it from one end to the other. Now you're going to come to some texture, we just let it go. We just let the texture be. Oh, here it comes. Here comes some oil. Oh, here it is. Noil. Dabo. Let it go. Let it be noil. Be noily, man. Be noily. So that's how, that's how I spin a worsted bat. Now you can also spin it woolen where all of the matchsticks are in a big pile and there's a lot of air in between. And the best way to do that with a bat, with my bats, is the same way you would do it with top. Take your strip and pull off a little chunk, approximately one staple length. If you just sort of pull on the end you'll get a chunk that's about the right size. And then, and when we take our chunk, what we're gonna do is put it over our finger. Finger, bat, over, wrap it around. And what we're doing here is we're making the fibers go in all different directions, and we're gonna pull off the front as you can see, there's fibers going this way and this way, and we're mushing them all up together, and then we're going to add a little more air into the wool when we do it this way. And when I spin over the fold, I usually do long draw. So you attach the little tornado bit at the front and then just let it go. So you just pull it back and it creates a big swirl and you let it on.
Now you'll notice this is less even. There's thinner spots here and here, and it's a little thicker here. That's okay. That's what woolen spun's about. It's okay. It's really happy that way. I'm gonna keep going because the noil is here. Let's see what happens when we reach the noil. There it is, being noily. Wonderful. So we've made some bats, we've spun them up. Now what are we gonna do with them? Please allow me to offer some patterns for your consideration. First, woolen spun yarns make great hats. This is the beloved Aaron hat by Solon Koi Lorer. It is a free pattern. It is one of the most popular patterns on Ravelry. It's very easy to knit. This one has some silk noil in it. It would show off texture really well, but not be too busy. Another free hat pattern, very popular, is the Barley Hat by Tin Can Knits. Another very simple pattern that would be great with even textured bats. This one has uh, noil and sari silk in it. This was a set of minis and I spun the minis. I split each mini in half and then spun it, spun them all end to end to end and then chain fried it. The hat I'm wearing is another great hat, especially for bulky yarns. It's called the Vermonter and that is by Abri Gregorio. It is a purchase pattern. We'll probably make a million of them. Uh, this is not my bat, but it is hand spun and it's very nice, very simple hat. Great for showing off super fun yarns. For the not hat category, which would do fine with a woolen or a worsted spun yarn, is the very popular pattern, the Quaker Yarn Stretcher by Susan Ashcroft. And that's also a purchase pattern. And this is the boomerang version. While each of those hats was, uh, could be made with a single bat, uh, this is two bats. So each bat is, that I make is approximately 80 to 90 grams, which is about three ounces. Um, this weighs nearly, this is two bats, so it's six ounces. The Quaker Yarn Stretcher is definitely a pattern where you can just stop when you're about to run out of yarn which is why it's great for hand spun. And I didn't admit this, this was a gift to me. Somebody, I have multiple friends who buy bats from me, spin them and knit them into things and then give them to me as a gift. What happened? Knitters, what? This pattern, I feel like all of these patterns so far would be pretty great, even with like wildly crazy, wildly crazy colors. For a more thinly spun worsted style yarn, more smooth, lace is a great option for bats. So I have a couple of lace projects to show you. The first I just started, it's a free pattern called Little Twig, and that's by Cheryl Namath. She has her fin, I am not finished. Her finished object said she used 44 grams, which is well within um, a bat. She used a, yarn, a commercially spun yarn that came in 50 gram skeins. So at 80 to 90 grams for a bat, you should be able to knit this really well. It's just a lace cowl. It's the lace pattern all the way up. This is a little bit more wild of a yarn. This was a club bat that's pinks and yellows with a bunch of sari silk in it. But uh, it's a little, it'll be better when, it, when it's finished and when it's blocked, but it's, you, I think you can see the lace in it. I think it's gonna be a really fun, sweet little cowl. Now there used to be two of these, I promise. I don't know where the other one is. 
I've had this pattern, Sourwood Mountain, in my queue since like I joined Ravelry. It's from Nitty in 09, and the pattern was written by Erica Joukowsky. And it's a very simple pair, I promise there were two, of mitts. You knit the cuff, so because it's in Nitty, it's a free pattern. You knit the cuff, and then you pick up and knit the hand part. And they're just very gentle. Um, there's some bobbles, which are super fun. And then these are some vintage buttons that I put on it. This was also a club bat. Together, the mitts weigh 30 grams. So you could maybe even get two pairs out of a bat. This, each one is 15 grams. So, you know, you could make five mitts. In case you lose one. The last lacy pattern I have to show you is also made from a single bat. It's a cowl called Persimmon. The pattern is by Jane Cochran and it costs $4. It comes in multiple sizes. I've knit, bigger, I've knit a bigger one, but for a bat, I made it a little bit smaller so that I could make it taller. The absolutely wonderful thing about this pattern, and you could probably apply it to any sort of pattern, is that goats are attracted to it. If you just sit in a field wearing it, goats will come up and sniff you. That's the amazing thing about this pattern. The other amazing thing about this pattern is it's knit from the bottom up. So you can see it starts with a bit of lace. It's a pretty simple lace pattern. Really well designed for this um, cowl. Do you like it? You wanna wear it? Oh, so pretty. So pretty. Now it smells like goat. So you knit the lace on the bottom, and then it's all stockinette, even the edge. It's just a rolled edge. So you just have to know how much yarn it takes you to do a round or two. And when you're about to run out of yarn, you just bind off, which is really perfect. This uses pretty much the whole bat, but that's how you can do it. Can you see the sparkle? Ooh, sparkle. I think that's why Saffron likes it. You like sparkle? Yeah. The next few patterns I'm gonna show you are all made with multiple yarns because you don't have to use a bat on its own. If you just have one bat and you wanna make something more than a hat, you can always combine your hand spun with a commercial yarn or you can combine your bat with another hand spun. So I have a couple of projects that I've done that I really liked that do that. The first is not done, but I've knit this pattern before. I really, really like it. It's called Snake Skin, two words, and it's by Ashley Soley, and it is a purchase pattern. It is a tube, a cowl, so you're, um, you're always just knitting and it's meant for multiple yarns. The one I used, there's a fly on your nose. The one I made before had a neutral and then I made it with minis. This one I'm just making with two different yarns. Um, but you don't have to leave in your ends yo because after you knit your tube and it's very long, you graft it. This is a provisional cast on. So I will graft the end to the beginning and then all of my ends will just be stuck inside and no one will know I never wove them in. This, I think, is great with even like the wildest bats. It's a pretty simple chevron, increases, decreases, really addicting, super fun. I highly recommend it. I have no idea what this is. It's not hand spun. It is way too consistent. This is actually six ounces. This was two different bats that I spun. One bat was up each ply was a separate bat. And this is how it looks, and I'm super in love with it. Why am I not knitting on this always? I don't know. I really like it though. These bats were a little wild. There's a bunch of, sorry, silk in them. They're a little, a little wild. This bat, this is perfect. Snakeskin is perfect for wild, wild. And she gives you and says to knit this color, you know, 
be this many rows and this color, that many rows. You don't have to do that. I have far more of this than I do of this. So my white stripes aren't just aren't as thick. That's really smart, right? Why it's really small. Another pattern that I've knit multiple times, and this is just a, a dorky little sample that's been beat up, but it's called In the Meantime 2 by Carly Stipe. And those are all different words. In the Meantime 2. T-W-O. This is... I wear it as a headband underneath my bike helmet sometimes when it's cold. This is a very easy pattern. It has the bat is the green and then there's just a white background color. You're only holding one yarn at a time and you're just doing, there's baby birds that want their mamas to feed them. You can see some sorry silk right here. So, um, oh, ah! Sure, bring all the hand spun out into the pasture with the animals, what could go wrong? So this pattern... You use one yarn, you just knit, and the other yarn you do like knit one purl one across, and it just makes this incredibly fun textured pattern that this has been really beat up. But when it's new, it's great. And um, it's written for a cowl that you can make long or short or wide or whatever, whatever you do. I would just, uh, it's a free, free pattern. Just, you know, measure how much of your background yarn, how much of your bat you have, knit the ribbing, measure it. And then the difference is how much yarn you have to save to knit the ribbing on the other side. So just keep going until you're almost out of yarn, until you're at that amount. It's really fun. Very addicting pattern. The last one I have to show you, I also didn't knit. It was also a friend who bought bats and spun and knit and then gifted. This is the Dwayne Park Triangle by Kirsten Kapoor, and it is a purchase pattern. And though I didn't knit this, so I don't own the pattern, I'm pretty sure I'm going to someday. You knit this. This bit is my bat. And then this bit is additional hand spun, and then there's even more hand spun at the end. That's different. So I believe this is three ounces of my bat plus um, additional hand spun. You, if you want to make it this big, you probably need six ounces of a bat and then a separate yarn for the lace edging. So this is a big triangle, squishy garter stitch of wonderfulness that's so cozy and makes me really happy. And then you stripe it with your white, and then there's a beautiful lace edging. And it's really a fabulous, fabulous sweater. Fabulous. Very wearable, very comfortable. Highly recommended. And then I have a couple of things to show you that I know will be great with bats, but I don't have them in my bats. But you need to see them. The first is the Rusted Wing Shawl by Sarah Bauer, who is Sarah from Yarns at Yinhu. And I knit mine wrong. Okay, so this isn't exactly right. But it's a really great pattern. And I didn't weave in my ends because when I realized I knit it wrong, I wanted to rip it out because I don't want to waste this yarn. It's a very fun boomerang shawl that I, I increased wrong with a lace edging. So the background yarn here is hand spun that Sarah gave me. It's a Jacob fleece that she did like this gradient. What? And then the red is a farm yarn that I got at Rhinebeck a few years ago. So you could use a bat for the background. This weighs about six ounces, so you might need two. Or you could just use a bat for the, for the accent bits. Either way, or both, it would be great. It'd be really, really great. This is, I'm excited to knit this again. I really am. Woodpecker. If you're not into accessories, how about a sweater? This is a very basic top-down raglan sweater where I just used hand spun for the yoke and the sleeves and the bottom. And then this is just Cascade 220 for the body. Um, this is a little, 
This was a braid from Into the World, and it's a little over four ounces. I used my braid, and then a beautiful person gifted me her braid, so in case I ran out. But you could do it with less. You would just have a smaller yoke part of hand spun, and you don't necessarily have to do the cuffs, or you could, you know, get two bets, do six ounces, whatever. Any basic top-down raglan sweater that you enjoy would work for it. Just And lastly, oh my Clara Bear, can you tell the sheepies are really pregnant and they're very fat? What was that, buddy? You wanna come over, Bear? You wanna come say hi? Come here. Let us not forget crochet. This here, the inner part is a more bulky yarn. This was the leftovers from my barley hat. Uh, just a granny square. Super cozy. And then this is a thinner one with some silk. You see that silk right there? Oh, it makes me so happy. And it sparkles and has sorry silk floating all around in it. Dude, crochet that stuff. Crochet it up. Get knitting. Go. Stop watching. Go knit. Go. Go, go, go.